What happens when you lose your electrical system in flight? This is a very common question on both your checkride and knowledge tests, not to mention a crucial thing to know. Let's simulate a total loss of electrical in our Cessna 172. The first important thing to note is that the airplane doesn't fall out of the sky. The engine keeps running because as long as the propeller is spinning, the crankshaft is still turning and causing the magnetos to fire charges into the spark plugs, keeping combustion going in the cylinders. In fact, the only thing the engine needs from the electrical system is on startup, as the starter is driven off the battery. After startup, the engine runs completely independent of the electrical system. All aircraft have different systems running off the electrical, so consult your POH for what will actually happen if you lose electric. But let's look at this Cessna 172. We'll cut the electrical power by turning off both the master battery and alternator. We've lost the lights. In the daytime, this might not matter, but consider we won't have internal lights to see the panel or external lights to light up the runway and be seen by other aircraft at night. The instrument panel is working fine, mostly. The pitot-static system and vacuum-driven gyros still power most of the dials, but we've lost the turn coordinator. As we bank left and right, notice that it still shows wings level. Some engine monitors are still working, but we've lost the left and right fuel gauges. More importantly, we've lost our radios, navigation, and avionics equipment. We can't communicate in or out, can't use the VORs, and we've lost the GPS for navigation. We've also lost the autopilot and the transponder. This might not be the case with other units and other aircraft, but it's happened here. In the Cessna, there's another very important thing that fails, the flaps. Since they're electrically actuated, moving the flap handle does nothing for them. As you can see when we move it and then take a look out the back and see the flaps in the retracted position still. The most important thing to understand is that the plane still flies. We may have lost navigate and communicate, but our number one job, aviate, is still available to us. In a situation like this, it's best to land at a nearby airport to troubleshoot and repair. Preferably, it'll be a non-towered airport where you can observe traffic, if any, but if you must land at a towered airport, be sure to get ready to follow the light gun signals. Now, it's pretty rare for the electrical system to just up and quit on you. What is more common is to have an alternator failure. The alternator, or generator in some aircraft, uses the engine's power to charge the battery, which is what the electrical system runs on. If the alternator fails, which we can simulate by just turning off that master switch, we'll now be running solely off the power stored in the battery. Notice the ammeter is right away dropped into the negative, showing that we have a pull on the battery. Different instruments will show this differently, and you may have a low voltage enunciation somewhere on your panel too, cluing you into the alternator failure. We do have a voltometer on the panel. Prior to the alternator failure, it was showing 28 volts. It now shows 25. As the charge is drained on the battery, this will slowly go down. Let's see how long we have before we lose all electricity. Notice in a well-functioning battery, we don't lose everything as soon as the alternator fails. The battery is strong enough to run the whole system, at least for a while. This gives us time to troubleshoot and plan a landing somewhere. The first thing we can do is run troubleshooting. Consult our POH, but it'll normally involve checking the circuit breakers and cycling the alternator master switch on and off, among other things. Now, we'd start powering down anything we don't need to give the battery some more life. The GPS is a big power user, so we might turn that off, at least temporarily, if we don't need it. Now, to get ready for a landing, we need to do everything we can while we still have electrical power. We might tell ATC what we're up to and switch over to the CTAF if we're going to a non-towered field and let them know early that we're inbound and we might be Nordo, meaning no radio. At night, you'll want to activate the pilot-controlled lighting as soon as you can, because once that radio's gone, we can't do that. Most lighting systems will stay on for 10 minutes, so try to activate it within that 10-minute window as close as you can so that you don't activate it lose your radios, and then the lights go off prior to landing. We won't have flaps when the power dies. You could do a no-flaps landing. You should be practicing them in training or on your own anyways. But if you're concerned about a short runway, you can go ahead and put 10 degrees of flaps in now. There's no problem cruising around with a small amount of flaps, as long as you're below the max speed for the flap setting. What you don't want to do is be on final for landing with full flaps. Yeah, you may have stretched the battery long enough to get fully configured prior to landing, but let's say you need to go around and don't have the battery power to put flaps back up. You don't want to be trying to climb out in that dirty configuration. With just 10 degrees of flaps in though, a climb really isn't a problem. It's a good compromise all around. So notice on the clock how long we've lasted with the battery. 
we do eventually run out of volts and the battery dies, so notice that you do have a time window before that happens. The main takeaways on an electrical failure is that it's not a dire emergency, especially in daytime VFR, as the engine keeps running. At night, there are some concerns due to lighting. In IMC, an electrical failure does indeed constitute an emergency, as you'll have gone partial panel with no navigation capability or radios. You can leverage a handheld GPS or EFB, as well as a handheld radio in an emergency. Read up on your aircraft's electrical failure procedures and study up with Flight Insight Ground Schools today at the link here or in the description.